Hello, Dan Harvey for Boris Effects here with a guide to sharing roto shape and tracking data across a range of host applications. In addition to the standalone and Mocha Pro plugins, Mocha is also integrated into the Continuum and Sapphire plugins, which are available on a variety of hosts. With this in mind, strategies for sharing Mocha data throughout the facility pipeline can be helpful in building more efficient collaborative workflows. To illustrate the process, I'll begin an Avid Media Composer, where I've applied Continuum Radial Blur, held back by a mask drawn in the Mocha Pixel Chooser. I'll launch Mocha, select the shape, and hit the Export Project button to store the standalone Mocha project so that it's available to load into another instance of Mocha on another host. Now I'll move over to Adobe After Effects, where I'll apply the Sapphire S Rays effect to the same shot and load a preset from the browser. I'll hit the Edit Mocha button to launch the Mocha UI and hit the Open Project button to load in the Mocha project I saved out of Avid. I'll hit the Save button to save the Mocha mask in After Effects. In the next example I'd like to use the same Mocha mask to hold back one of the native effects in Blackmagic Resolve. I'll begin by right clicking my initial grade node and selecting Add Matte which enables me to set the current clip as a matte input to the node tree. Next I'll right click the matte node, insert a serial grading node after it and connect its RGB output to the alpha input on my main grading node. I'll apply an arbitrary continuum effect to the matte's grading node, hit the launch mocha button in the effect UI, open the mocha project I saved earlier, save the mocha project back to resolve and hit the show mask button in the effect UI in order to feed the mocha mask into the alpha input on my main grading node. Now the mocha mask can be adjusted with the node key controls in the same manner as a normal key channel in resolve. I'll apply resolve's native prism blur effect and this is held back by the imported mocha mask. Next I'll move over to Autodesk Flame and apply a native blur node to my batch tree. As in the previous example I'd like to hold this back with the Mocha mask so I'll open the Sparks browser and add the Sapphire S Mocha Spark to my batch tree. S Mocha for Flame breaks out Mocha as a standalone masking tool within the Flame batch, desktop or timeline. I'll edit into the node, launch Mocha Open the project I exported earlier, save and connect the output to the matte input on the blur node. Now I'll enable the matte in the blur node to hold back the effect with the Mocha mask. I'll return to the Mocha UI for a moment to examine the track and shape export options. In Mocha for Sapphire on Flame I have the option to export shape and track data to the format supported by Flame, namely the native stabilizer and Gmask setups. If this were a different host I would have the option to export setups supported by that host only. Mocha Pro on the other hand enables the export of tracking, shape and various other data sets to a wide range of hosts which can prove useful in collaborative workflows. I'll open the standalone Mocha project in Mocha Pro, select the shape and display the planar surface overlay. The blue rectangle is a visualization of the four point track generated by Mocha's planar tracker. I'll adjust it to define the plane for the track I want to export. Now I'll hit the export tracking data button and explore the export options. As we can see Mocha Pro exports to all of the popular editing and VFX applications. I'll select Nuke as my target application and save my tracking data. Now I'll repeat the process to export my shape data as a Nuke Roto setup. I'll move over to Nuke, add Nuke's God Rays effect to my node graph and adjust it as required. Now I'll select Insert Comp Nodes from the File menu and load in the tracking data I exported from Mocha. In the Track Node Editor pane I'll select all four trackers and average them in order to generate a tracking point for the centre of my plane. I'd like to use this tracker to control the centre of the God Rays effect, so I'll click the Animate button for the centre parameter in the God Rays node 
and link it to the average track for the centre point. Now the effect follows the track as required. Now I'd like to hold the effect back with the mask I exported earlier, so I'll right click in my node graph to insert the Roto setup I exported from Mocha Pro. In the Roto node editor pane I'll set its output to mask. Now I'll select the mask channel as the mask for the god rays to hold it back. In the final example I'll return to Mocha Pro to export the tracking data for the device screen as a new corner pin setup and the mask for the talent's hand as a roto. Back in Nuke I have my foreground and background layers defined as the A and B inputs into a merge node. I'll select the foreground and insert the corner pin node I exported from Mocha so that it follows the tracking data. Now I'll select the background layer, insert the Roto node and set its output to Alpha. Finally I can set the merge node to use the Alpha from the Roto node to hold back the hand from the composition. Thanks for watching. As we've seen, Mocha and its various implementations can prove invaluable as a hub for generating and sharing high quality roto and tracking data in pipelines which make use of a range of editing, graphics and VFX solutions. Be sure to visit BorisFX.com to download a free trial of Continuum, Sapphire or Mocha Pro. And subscribe to the BorisFX YouTube channel to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on all of the BorisFX products.